Hi everybody, I'm Miss Barbara, and I am going to show you today how to paint four different kinds of flower pots, four different ways to paint a flower pot, which is a nice thing to do for spring and summer for the uh, plants you want to grow. So I'm all set up here. I'm going to show you all the supplies you need. All right, so I've got my paints, I've got my brushes, I have a water dish over here, I have a little rag because this can be messy. I have some sponges and you definitely want a surface to work on. So either put down pa papers, newspapers, or this is just a little Dollar Tree cookie sheet um, because this paint, and wear, wear an apron. You see, I'm wearing my apron. This paint, if it's acrylic paint, will not come out of your clothes and it won't come off of uh, surfaces. Okay, so I'm putting my diagonal tape Right on my pot all the way around, make sure I've got my edges nicely pressed tightly against the pot. Need a couple more of these. Let me see. In this direction, try and make them lined up. But it really doesn't matter, you know, there's no mistakes. Because if it doesn't do what you had in mind, that's okay. You just change, change it somehow to make it work. I think one more of these should work. I don't think I have that one exactly in the same direction as these, but that's okay. This will just be a funky design. Now I'm going to come the other way. So this will make like a dino print. Let's cross them. So if I do this, come in the other way, instead of squares and rectangles here, it's gonna be more on a slant. And again, I wanna try and make the tape stick as tightly as I can to the pot so that the paint will not go under it. And I'll have nice clean lines when I'm finished, but if it goes under a little bit, that's okay too. It doesn't matter. So this is not going to be a uniform pattern. It's just going to be random shapes. So now you need a, you can use a paper plate. Um, as a palette, which a palette is what you put your paint on. I think we will do this in purple. So I'm going to shake my paint to make sure it's mixed really well and squirt some out on the on my palette. Now remember, you can always add more paint. So you don't need to put out a whole lot. If you find you need more, then you can add more, but you can't get it back in the bottle. So you don't want to waste it. So just put out a small amount at a time and get your brush. And now you're going to paint right, oh, this isn't gonna, this is kind of a translucent. It may not show up that well. No, oh, it's sparkly though. So you can paint right over the tape onto your pot and the tape will be a resist so that it will not get the paint under the tape. And that way, the pattern will be painted areas and unpainted areas. Now, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see this color. It's purple, but it's sparkly. So it doesn't show up really well on the camera. I'm just going to paint it all over. Like I said, you can go right over the tape. It doesn't matter because we're gonna peel that tape off when the pot is dry. You can't peel the tape off until the pot is dry. And usually acrylic paints dry pretty quickly. So you won't have to wait too long. And I got just about the right amount of paint. Let me see if I can make it work or I have to add more. There we go. Now that's one coat. It may require a second coat. So we'll set that aside and we'll let it dry a little bit and we'll come back to it. I'm gonna show you another technique. Okay, so that was the tape resist. 
Now, how about polka dots? I brought two things to use to make dots. You can find anything that's circular, like a spool or a spool from thread, a sponge roller, like this is one of those small paint sponge rollers. I'm going to use that to make dots. Anything round. If it's tiny dots you want, you can use the tip of a, uh, you can use the end of a pencil eraser, the flat eraser. And remember, after you paint, I have to rinse my brush because if this paint dries on the brush, it won't come out. So I'm rinsing my brush right now just to make sure that paint doesn't dry on there and then that brush is ruined. So for polka dots, let's see, I'm gonna use a couple different colors. So remember, shake your paint and squirt again. You can add more paint to your palette when you've used it up. So you don't have to make big, big puddles of paint. You can make like a quarter size at a time. And then if you need more, you can come get more. Let's see, orange and green and blue. I think we'll make the polka dots. Okay, so I'm going to use my cork. So I have, with the cork, I have two ends because I can put one color on this end and another color on this end. And then I will use my sponge roller for the third color. So first I'm going to just dip my cork in the paint, get it nice and coated and go straight down and up, just like that. And you can probably get more than one dot out of one dip of paint. Okay, if it's too runny, it'll start to run down your pot. So we want to make sure that it's just the right amount that it won't run. But if it runs, these are easy enough to wipe off. So that's very cheery, isn't it? Nice blue polka dot. There we go. So I've just made some random dots all the way around the pot, not too close together because I want to leave room to put the other colors in between. So there's the blue. Now I'm going to blot this paint a little so it doesn't get all over my hands and turn my cork over. And I think I'll do orange next. So if you get too much paint on your cork, then just blot it a little on your whatever you're using as a palette so that it isn't too drippy. Now I'm going to add orange dots. And using different size dots is always good. So you could use like a cork size and a pencil eraser and a sponge roller. Anything that's round enough that you can hold on to and dip in the paint. Oh, there we go. I'm going to spin it a little. Okay. So now I'm going to switch to our sponge roller. Okay. It's got a nice big circle and that's going to be green. So this is going to make a big circle so there won't be as many of these. I'm going to make sure that the whole circle touches the um, pot. And you can even do like a half circle at the top of your pot, like it's going over the edge of the pot. Okay. And put some down at the bottom. So they don't all have to be the whole circle in the center of the pot. You can have them coming off at the edge just to change it up and give it some interest. Okay, so I have to get a little more green paint, maybe. Oh, I made it around, didn't I? Now, let's see, did I bring anything tiny enough for little dots? Mm. No. So th then you could take, one other thing you could do is take some black, because that kind of makes things pop, just a tiny bit of black and Oh, I do have something for a smaller dot. I have the end of a sponge brush. So I'm gonna put a little black here and just put little black accents on my arm. Little black accents on the pot to bring out the other colors. So I'm gonna use the end of a 
my foam paintbrush like this. I'm just going to dip it in the black and add little black ones, which kind of makes it pop a little. So I have three different size dots on my pot. But you can also just make it all the same size if you want. It's fine. However you want to be creative is fine. There's no right or wrong way. It's whatever you want to do. Once you start doing something, you might get an idea to do it totally different than what I'm showing you, and that's totally fine. The idea is to just get creative. Because being creative is actually very good for you. It's very good for your brain. It's good for your memory. It helps with problem solving. It makes you happier. So it's good to be creative. So it doesn't really matter what you do. But there we go. We have a little polka dotted pot. Okay. So that's flower pot number two. And we're going to set this one over here to dry. I'm going to put that in its base. And I'm going to set this one in its base. That's a good way to let it dry and not touch the table or whatever you're working on. All right, number three, uh, I'm gonna show you how to paint a garden on your flower pot. And this is a fun way to make a little garden. So we're gonna need some green for the grass, and then we're gonna need colors for the flowers. So I'm gonna put a little green here. Let me move these out of the way so you can see. I have orange and I have blue. How about I add a little red and some yellow. There's a little red. Again, you don't need much because you can always come back and add more and some yellow. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is paint grass around the bottom of our pot. Okay. And with that, I'm just going to take my brush. And you're going to make quick little strokes. It's not a heavy stroke. It's a real light little flick of your wrist. You're just going to keep flicking your wrist like that, making little strokes of green, just like this. Ready? See how I'm just in their different sizes and they're close together and they crisscross. And you can go over top of them. The more strokes you make, the more it's going to look like grass because grass is a whole bunch of little pieces and it all together. They crisscross, they're on top of each other, different shades of green. You can even add a little yellow to the green when you're doing this to give it a little different color or use two different greens, a dark one and a light one. Can you see my strokes? Just all the way around the bottom of the pot. You can bring them up a little higher. They don't all have to be the same height. And you see how I'm just flicking my wrist like this with this, and I'm not pushing real hard. The harder you push, the fatter your stroke's gonna be. So if you want thin blades of grass, you wanna just flick lightly. If you push down real hard, you're gonna have real fat grass, which is fine if you want fat grass. And grass comes in different widths too, because there's all different kinds of grass. Almost around the pot. Okay, so there, I've made grass all the way around the pot just by making little flicks of my brush like this and crisscrossing them and doing it on top. So once that's finished, we're going to add flowers. I'm going to rinse my brush so that it doesn't get dried and ruined from the paint. And to make flowers, we're just going to use a sponge. I think I'll wet it just a little bit because this sponge is really dry. Okay, so I have my sponge. I'm just going to squish it up. If you don't have a sponge, you could probably just squish up some paper towel and just squish it all up so that it's all crinkly to give it texture. And I'm just going to dip in some colors. I'm going to blot it a little bit. I don't want it again. I don't want it too runny. Because what I wanted to do is just make 
Let me get where the camera is. I'm just going to make these dots. I'm just dabbing that around. I'm going to add a little yellow. And you can overlap your colors and change them as you go. See, I added a little yellow. So now the orange and the yellow are together. Let's add a little red in with that. And I'm just dabbing with the sponge to make it give the illusion of flowers growing all the way around. And I'm going to put a little blue in there. You can see the colors. A little blue. And the colors are going to blend together. So when the blue and the yellow are together, it's going to turn kind of green. And the red and the yellow is going to make orange. And so just use light taps of different colors. And you have a garden around your pot. Can you see? There we go. See the garden? So we're going to put this one aside to dry too. Now, if you wanted, you could even just dip in the blue and make a whole blue sky above your garden. Now, the last one I'm going to show you, I have to use a big pot because I have a big hand. You guys have smaller hands, you kids. But this one, we use our hand to make the flower, or we use our hand to make the stem and our fingerprint for the flowers. Now, this gets kind of messy, and we could do, um, well, we're going to do the flowers first, and then we'll put the grass around the bottom. So for this, you're going to have to pick a color and paint your hand, okay? So I think, well, if this is going to be the stem, I'm going to paint my hand green, okay? Oh, I should take this off. All right, I'm going to paint my hand green. I'm going to need a little more green. This is going to be like the stems of the flower or like a bush that has flowers on it. So once I get my hand nice and green, this is why you definitely want to have a wet cloth or towel, paper towels nearby. So I have a green hand and I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it on my pot. And press down, make sure I get all the fingers in the hand. There we go. This one didn't, I'm going to add a little more to that one. That one, the paint dried already. So that becomes the stem for some flower. I mean, yeah, the stems for flowers. So we're going to take Wipe our hand off. And we're going to take our fingers, or you can use a brush if you want, but you can use your fingerprints to get where you can see to make flowers around your stem, like petals. You can make as many petals as you want. And then you can pick a different color. And make your fingerprints be the flower petals. I think this one's going to have lots of colors. So I don't think you can see that. I can't. There we go. I'll get like that so you can see better. Let's see. We need some red. I'm going to run out of fingers in a minute. Not too much. We don't want it to be too thick and globby. And we have one more down here. I think we'll make it another blue one. Oh, I have green and there it's blue and yellow. How about that? So that's one way to use your handprint to make like a bouquet of flowers. Now the other way is that your handprint is going to be the flower. So I'm going to have to paint my hand again. Let's see. What color shall we make this flower? Hmm. We'll make it blue. 
And I did lots of blue paint and paint my hand blue. I've got blue and green because I'm using the same brush. So it's going to be more turquoisey than regular blue. That's fine. Okay, my hand's painted. And now I'm going to put it up higher on the pot. Let's see if I can get where you can see. I'm putting it up high because I'm going to make a stem below it. So this is the flower, my hand. That's going to be the flower. And then I'm going to paint the stem and the leaves under it. So I probably should have picked a different color because the stem and the leaves, because I used green with it in the blue, it's like greenish. And so it's going to kind of be the same color as my stem and leaves, but that's all right. So to make your stem, and your leaves, the same thing. We're just going to take our brush. And again, you don't want to press super hard. Just get some paint on it. And we're just going to make a line down. Let me see. I want to make sure you can see what I'm doing. So I just made kind of a little wiggly line. I held my brush on the point of it and just made a curvy line down. I'm going to get some more paint. And I'm going to make a curved line up. And another one like that, a little swerve, almost like an S. And that makes the leaves. And then you can just paint them in. And you have a flower from your hand. Okay. Now what we're going to do is just add grass around the bottom of the pot. Just like I showed you before. We're just going to take our brush and just do our our quick little, our quick little strokes, just to make a little bit of grass around the pot for the flowers. There. So now we have another little like garden flower pot, only we used our hand prints to make the flowers. Let's see if we can take the resist off now and see if this shows up. It probably could use a second coat, but I think it might show up enough. I'll get close. So we're just gonna peel the tape off and see the pattern. Yeah, it shows. So wherever the tape was, there's no paint, and that made a nice pattern when I plot. And you can make any kind of pattern you want. You could use the tape to make just designs, geometric designs. You could make squares and triangles, and it doesn't have to be anything in particular. And there we have just a pattern geometric plot. So that's four different ways that you can take it over here and show you a collection of plots. So we have the resist on the tape and we have polka dots and we have a flower garden and we have a garden made with the hand print. And you could put more than two hand prints around the pot, however many fit with your hand. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you have fun making your flower pot. Thanks for being with us. There we go. So enjoy painting your flower pot.